Hey everybody, Dr. Sean Talbot here. I'm going to uh, give a product overview, um, but I'm, this is a, this is specifically for health professionals. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about every single product in the pro in the Amari product line. I've done that on another presentation. You can go you can go look at that. That one is kind of thirty thousand foot view, um, where I have uh, basically one one slide for each product, and I sort of give the highlights. What I want to do here is talk about half a dozen or so of, of our of our leading products, uh, and really get into the nitty gritty of some of the science because I think as health professionals you'll appreciate some of the stuff that we've done. So I want to I want to try to do a little bit of that. So without further ado, let's jump into this. Uh, a little bit about my background. Um, I'm trained in nutritional biochemistry. That's what my PhD is in from Rutgers. Um, and uh, for the first part of my career, I was what you might call a sport nutritionist, right? Trying to use nutrition to change biochemistry to get the best performance out of elite level athletes. So I did a lot of work with Olympic training centers and U.S. ski team and U.S. track and field association, and you know it was a it was a it was a great great thing, right? What we were trying to do is use food and nutrition and sleep quality and um, and bi biochemistry and stress hormones and 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 proper recovery so that these athletes could get an edge. And sometimes that was a mental edge we were trying to get for them, so that they could get the best out of their phys uh, out of their physical performance. And you know, great great thing to do. Uh, shifted gears though, and really trying to take those same principles and apply them to a mainstream audience, so that like you, the average person that feels just kind of blah can feel amazing again. The first person who feels terrible can feel normal again. The person who feels great can get that mental edge and they can, you know, and they can go and they can have better resilience and they can handle more stress and they can get more done. And that, what I just described, is what I refer to as the mental wellness continuum, where you might have some people that are, you know, a little depressed, a little anxious, a little burned out, you know, that kind of thing. They're not diagnosed necessarily with anything, but they, they, they feel terrible. And positive psychology, we refer to them as languishing. Or sometimes we'll refer to them as, as having burnout. Um, th th those people, the, the objective is to try to get them to feel normal again. The big part of the population are people that we see all the time who just feel kind of blah. They feel fatigued in the day. They feel anxious and restless at night. They don't get a good sleep quality. They just feel kind of blah. They're kind of dragging themselves through all the time. They don't feel great. Those people, we want to get feeling amazing, right? We want to take them from being a, on a scale of 1 to 10 on that mental wellness continuum. They might be a 5, and our objective is to get them to be a 7. Because once they get to be a 7, then they want to be an 8. Once they get to be an 8, they get to be a 9. The high performers that might already be a nine, they definitely want to try to get to be a ten, right? They're interested in you know getting that edge, right? How can I be a nine point one or a nine point two or a nine point three? Those are the elite athletes that I used to work with, and that what I just described these days is referred to as nutritional psychology. The idea of using nutrition and using supplements, which I'm going to talk mostly about tonight, um, using supplements to to optimize that performance, optimize that mental performance, whether it's their mood or their focus or their resilience or their stress levels or their ability to relax and get a good night's sleep or whatever, right? All of that falls under the mental wellness umbrella. And it falls under the mental wellness umbrella based on this new paradigm that how you feel is not just in your head, it's also in your gut, what we call the second brain, which is the source of most of our neurotransmitters. And it also comes from the third brain, our heart, which is the source of a lot of electrical signals and electromagnetic signals, which can influence our brain waves. So that new paradigm of the microbiome, which is part of the gut, we're going to talk about that in a second, and the gut and the heart and the brain and the axis in between, which we're going to talk about, those are all tools that we have available to us to optimize or improve the function of or 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 modulate the 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 efficiency of and in doing so we can help people feel better so this kind of stuff i'm recording this right now i'm going to post it on youtube uh, it's going to go up on Facebook. It's going to go on the Amari.com website. We're going to put it a lot of different places. You can see up here all the different places that we put information. Um, Facebook pages, Amari.com. Uh, I have a YouTube page, Instagram page. My blog is usually a really good place to go to get 
to get um, you know research articles that I'm commenting on and things like that. Uh, and I also have this. Uh, this is a, an organization called Any Question, where you can uh, you can sign up for my uh, my section. You can ask me any questions there, and it gets it gets posted to Any Question. It also gets posted to Instagram. You can download it and use it on your own social medias. But um, what we're talking about here is this paradigm of the gut being good at certain things the head being good at certain things, the heart being good at certain things, and what you don't see on this slide, you'll see on, it, it, you'll actually see in a couple of slides, the axis, which is your immune system and your endocannabinoid system and your nervous system. These are all targets that we can naturally modify to improve how somebody feels and how somebody performs. And a lot of times we do that through supplements. But before I get into supplements, I want to sort of frame for you where I think where where supplements fit. Uh, they they can be a very very important piece of an overall puzzle, but they are not the only piece of an overall puzzle. So what you see on the screen right now is what I have um, is what I call the Sense program. So Sense is something I've been using for years and years and years. It appeared in my very first book, um, the book that you saw on the on the screen just a second ago, Mental Fitness. That's my fourteenth book. So I've been writing about this for a good long time. Um, sense is this idea of describing to people that supplements can be the first piece of the puzzle if they're properly formulated, if they're science-based, if they use the right amounts of the right kinds of ingredients with the right extracts. We're going to get into all of this uh, in, the, in the seminar tonight. But if those supplements are properly formulated and they can increase somebody's motivation and their energy – maybe that person now is going to be more likely to be physically active. Maybe they're more likely to be, be, be an exerciser. Maybe they're more likely to get off the couch, whereas before they were just too tired. Um, maybe if we can use a supplement that's properly formulated to control appetite, control craving, reduce stress eating, that kind of stuff, maybe now that person has the bandwidth, so to speak, to choose a more prudent diet and instead of going through the, through the fast food drive through or picking up junk food or just grabbing a you know, processed food. Maybe they're going to choose a salad instead. If you can use a properly formulated supplement to help somebody relax and take the edge off and, and calm the buzzing in their brain so that they can, they can calm down enough, maybe they'll get a better night's sleep. And then that starts that whole positive cascade of a good night's sleep, gives you a good day, a good day sets you up for a good night's sleep. So the supplements can be, in, if they're used the right way, can be the first piece of the puzzle to help our clients and our patients get on the plan that they already know that, that they need to be on, right? There's a big gap between what we know. Everybody knows they're supposed to eat right. Everybody knows they need more fruits and vegetables. Everybody knows they need eight hours of sleep. Everybody knows they're supposed to be physically active. The gap between that, what we know, and what we actually do, our behavior. Supplements can sometimes help us close that gap but it's really important for us as health professionals to educate, educate the people we work with to say, hey, the supplements are a piece of that overall program. It's not like you take the supplements and you know, swallow the pill and mix up the powder or whatever the case may be and, and sit back and wait for all the, all the magic to happen, right? You, they'll get some benefits, right? Then I'll show you some data that, 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 that shows that. But if we can use them to facilitate those other healthy lifestyle choices, I think, I think that's what we all – are looking for for our clients. So a lot of times here at Amari, what we talk about is products, which I'll mostly focus on tonight, programs, um, it, well, products, programs, and people. And the programs are things like this. This is, uh, this is our mental wellness um, retreat. This is a bed and breakfast style mental wellness retreat. Um, and I'm doing that presentation for, for you from, for, for, from here. It's in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Um, we'll bring people in sort of retreat style and we feed them healthy foods and we, we expose them to nature and we take them out on the ocean and we go to the beach and we go whale watching and we do a, we do a sound bath and we, you know, we do all this, all this kind of stuff, mental wellness modalities, vagus nerve activation and red light therapy and float beds and massage chairs and all that kind of stuff to really surround people with all these programmatic sorts of things, yoga, breath work, mindfulness, etc., so that when they go home from our place, 
they've they've experienced a program so that they know how to do it themselves, right? So they know that they can plug that into their own life and they can eat a little bit better, they can sleep a little bit better. We talk a lot about sleep hygiene here and we show people how to do that. Um, but then people can apply those programs to their life and get benefits out of that. They can apply the products to their life and get benefits out of that. And the way that we distribute these products is direct to consumer, right? You can buy the products on the website. You can buy the products from your healthcare practitioner. You can buy them from your neighbor down the street, right? People build businesses around this. That's the social networking, social marketing aspect of how Amari does its business model. That's the people piece of it, you know? So we'll, we'll do meetings all around the country, all around the world now. Um, and that idea of people needing social connections, people helping other people is a really, really cool thing. To, for, for example, we have a pilot program underway right now to help people lose weight after the holidays, you know, after the first part of the year, everybody wants to get back in shape. And we've got several thousand people in this Facebook group. And, you know, I'm helping moderate some of it. We've got other nutritionists and mental wellness counselors that are moderating part of it. But a lot of the moderation and a lot of the support comes from the other participants, right? So the more that we can bring people together to help one another and learn from each other, sort of the wisdom of the crowd, if you will, that's a, that's a way to improve mental well-being, right? So we can do it with products, we can do it with programs, we can do it with people. And what we're trying to do here at Amari is bring all of that under the same umbrella so that it's a, it's a one-stop shop, you know, in a, in, a, in a certain sense. And the cool thing about it is that that one-stop shop is not going to be the same stop for every single person. So my program of products, programs, people is going to be really, really different than Joe's, than Jane's, than Jim's, than you guys get the idea. And that's how we can customize these regimens. And that's exactly what I talked about um, in this keynote presentation that I just gave at this joint conference of NAMI, National Alliance for Mental Illness, and MHA, Mental Health America. Uh, so I gave the keynote here at, at the conference called Hearts and Minds, talking about the linkage between physical health and mental health. And it was really, really cool because what I talked about was the microbiome, gut, brain, heart axis and how it's related to mental well-being. So I talked a lot about the microbiome. I talked a lot about different probiotic strains and prebiotic fibers and what we call phytobiotics, plant extracts or phytonutrients that can change the signaling across the gut brain axis or the heart brain axis. And I got to tell you, it was really, really well received because people in NAMI and people in MHA tend to be very sort of brain oriented, right? They want to talk a lot about talk therapy and mindfulness and cognitive behavioral therapies and 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 great the, 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 those are, those can all be wonderful tools for certain people but now we have to broaden our view and say yep that's one way to do it supplements are one way to do it probiotics are one way to do it uh, uh, mindfulness is one way to do it uh, d breath work is one way to do it physical activity is one way to do it good sleep quality is one way to do it you guys get the idea right we're we're in a point now where the science is giving us really really good really evidence-based tools that we can bring to bear on this problem and customize whatever regimen is going to be the right thing for the for the people that we're working with okay so let's start getting into some of this um so we do a lot of research here um and be, because we do a lot of research we we find things right we discover very interesting things and that leads to an intellectual property platform meaning we have lots of scientific presentations that we do at different scientific conferences lots of peer-reviewed publications i'm going to share the data from some of those uh, as we go through tonight we have lots of patent applications. So patents protect the invention of a new formula that does a new thing that was not previously known or that was you know never never described before. Um, and so we've got dozens of patents pending globally, um, and we've actually just just been uh, awarded two of them, two more to come uh, in the in in the next couple of weeks. But I won't talk about those right now. Um, Menta Heart, which is one of the products that I'll talk about. Um, in this presentation, and Kids Mood Plus, another product that I'll talk about in this presentation, were just awarded uh, United States patents. And so the reason that I mention that is because it's one thing for me as the chief science officer of this company and the formulator of, of most of these products to say, these are great products, right? You know, you're going to love them. They're, 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 the, they're the best thing out there, right? They're the greatest thing since sliced bread. 
I'm obviously a biased observer uh, in that regard. Uh, so it's you know it's it's one thing for me to say it. It's another thing for it to be presented at a peer-reviewed scientific conference and then published in a peer-reviewed scientific publication and then patented by the U.S. Patent Office. These are all different l levels of sort of like stamp of approval or thumbs up or or however you want to describe that. We also have multiple best of awards across the industry. So sometimes it's for the company, like our company, Amari, has been um, uh, voted startup of the year twice. Uh, we're we're no longer a startup, but you know that was that was good in those in those growth in those growth years. Um, we're still like growing growing like crazy, but we're but we're definitely not a startup anymore. We have a number of uh, best product of the year, uh, you know, probiotic of the year, botanical of the year, product of the year, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll mention those for the for the couple of products that I'm gonna that I'm gonna talk about. But they many of them come back to this idea. Not all of them, right? Because think about sometimes we're working in the brain, in the head. Sometimes we're working in the brain, in the heart. Sometimes we're working in the brain and the gut. And in the brain and the gut, sometimes we're working on gut integrity, reducing leaky gut, right? The actual tissue of the gut. Sometimes we're working on the environment of the gut, making sure it's just slightly acidic, which is what good bacteria like to live in and bad bacteria don't, don't necessarily like to live in. And sometimes we're talking about the actual bacteria, which is the microbiome. And so the microbiome research, right? Any, any health professional watching right now uh, probably has a, a, at least a, an exposure to the microbiome. It w without exaggeration, what we're learning about the microbiome is changing how we think about mental wellness. It's changing how we think about physical health. It's changing how we think about all of human health and longevity. It really is completely, completely changing the game. Uh, and, and every week, you know, a, a, a groundbreaking paper comes out around the microbiome's involvement in and you fill in the blank with whatever disease you want to say or whatever health condition or whatever, whatever wellness trajectory, right? It really is determining in large part what goes on in the rest of the body. And so here at Amare, we are really focused on the microbiome from the perspective of mental well-being. In, in, in that, and I, and I can sum it up in a couple of lines, if your microbiome is in balance, you're going to feel good. And if it's out of balance, you might feel not good in a variety of different ways. You might, if your microbiome is out of balance, right, sort of like very broadly, you don't have enough good bacteria, you have too many bad bacteria. And if you don't have enough good bacteria, they're not producing the signaling molecules that you want. 90% of our serotonin comes from our microbiome, the neurotransmitter sort of of being happy or sad. The, about 70% of our dopamine associated with motivation comes from our microbiome. About 50% of our GABA, the body's primary relaxing neurotransmitter, comes from, comes from your gut. Um, so, you know, if, if, if your gut is not where it needs to be, or if you don't have enough good bacteria, you're not making enough serotonin, so you're likely to be sad. You're not making enough dopamine, you're likely to be unmotivated. You're not making enough GABA, you're likely to be stressed and agitated and irritable. And, and, and then we haven't even got into short-chain fatty acids and all the wonderful things that your microbiome can make. Or if you have too many of the bad bacteria that are making other kinds of signaling molecules like inflammatory cytokines or you know immune activators in, in, in different ways, right? It can really set the signals that are coming out of your gut and going across your axis up to your brain and it, it, you know introduce a lot of static into the system. So if you're out of balance, you might be fatigued, you might be sad, you might be tense, you might be hungry, you can see the whole list there. And years ago, 20 years ago, we used to think that if somebody was fatigued, that was one problem that needed one sort of an intervention in order to bring their energy levels back. And then if they were sad, that was a different problem that needed a different intervention to bring their mood back and et cetera, et cetera. And now what we know that, it, again, in large part, it's their microbiome being out of balance. So if we can rebalance the microbiome, that brings their energy levels back and it brings their mood back and it brings their ability to relax back and it, and it helps control their, their hunger and their appetite and their stress eating and those sorts of things. It's, it, it's like this. This is how I describe it to a lot of people is that if your microbiome is in balance, it's like having an internal on-demand dynamic natural pharmacy that makes what you need in the right amounts 
when you need it, right? So that's the idea of making enough serotonin so you're happy and making enough dopamine so you're motivated and making sure those signals traverse the, the axis and do get to the brain. So we know that this happens. We know that we can give specific strains of bacteria that increase serotonin and dial down cortisol, for example. And when we do that, people feel less stressed. They feel calmer. They feel happier, right? We can we can we can quantify that kind of stuff in the in the clinicals. And I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how we how we do those measurements. So so the microbiome is a really, really important piece of this overall puzzle. It's not the only piece, but it's a very important piece of the puzzle. And you'll and you'll and you'll see sort of how we harness that in just a second. We also have to think about the axis. You know, when I say gut brain axis or heart brain axis, a lot of times people think that this axis word is just kind of a throwaway term, but it really is referring to another set of targets. The axis is sort of broadly the way that these brains communicate with each other. The axis is the communication network. And so the nervous system is part of that. Some of the signals are hardwired signals that go from the gut through the vagus nerve, for example, up to the brain and vice versa, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a two-way street or it's a multi-way street actually. So things that happen in the gut can in a millisecond be transmitted to the brain across the vagus nerve. We can, we can activate our vagus nerve with breathing because the vagus nerve also innervates the lungs. So if we're doing deep breathing exercises, that can help calm the brain. It can also help calm the gut. It can also help us sort of shift out of fight or flight reaction, the, the, the sympathetic nervous system, into the parasympathetic activation, which is more sort of the rest and digest. I'll talk about that in a little bit, mostly as it, as it relates to the heart-brain axis. But any of these, we can, we can adjust. We, there's things we can do in the nervous system, like I just explained, vagus nerve activation. There's things we can do in the immune system called immune system priming that can not only strengthen the immune system, it's different from stimulating the immune system. If we prime the immune system, your immune system is a better shield. So we know that people have you know, fewer upper respiratory tract complaints if we have a primed immune system versus not. Um, but when your immune system is primed, it's able to send signals across the axis from your second brain to your first brain much more efficiently. And as a result of that, we see about a 20% improvement in a psychological parameter called vigor, which is, which is one part uh, physical energy, one part mental acuity, one part emotional well-being. All wrapped up into one, that's vigor. It's the opposite of psychological burnout. We can improve that just by improving what the immune system is doing. So there's all kinds of things that we can do here. Um, the gut, obviously, I, I, I mentioned a little bit of that already. Uh, and the endocannabinoid system, there's ways that we can activate your body's endocannabinoid system to reduce pain and help with tension and help with sleep quality and help with stress levels. And you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's really, really exciting. All the tools that we have now that we, that we almost knew nothing about as little as a decade ago. Um, and this whole idea, idea of the gut brain axis like i said at the very very top of this call is fundamentally changing how we think about all of human health and that's important because a lot of the things that you see here these sort of syndromey kinds of s symptoms that our clients and our patients complain about right modern lifestyle issues um are the are the hardest to get a handle on and it for so long problem has been that has what has been on offer as treatments have not been very effective right um, antidepressants don't work very well for the majority of people who take them same thing with anti-anxiety drugs same thing with sleep drugs same thing with ADHD medications same thing with the things that people self-medicate with you know you know coffee and energy drinks and stimulants to get them up for the day and then depressants like you know like alcohol for example to 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 get people down in the evening right these are things that are not they're on the target i guess but they're definitely not on the bullseye because none of these solutions that have been on offer whether they're pharmaceutical solutions or or junk food solutions or whatever the case may be um they are certainly changing how we feel but they're not making us feel better. They're not making us feel good. They're not making us feel happier or energetic or more vigorous or any and, and of that kind of stuff. And the reason for it is they're not hitting the bullseye. They're not addressing 
the microbiome or the gut integrity or the signaling across the axis or, or, or inflammatory balance for that matter, right? So there's all kinds of layers across the gut-brain axis that we can target to help people feel better. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a little bit. So before I get into that, I just want to, I just want to have a little bit of fun. How do we even know that the microbiome is all involved with, with all this kind, kind of stuff? How do we know that it's not just that, uh, you know, somebody who's sad is eating a bad diet and because they're eating a bad diet, that's giving them a bad microbiome, right? How do we know that it is the microbiome that is driving these psychological changes? Well, that's how about a decade ago, uh, we learned this through what are called fecal microbiome transplants in rodents. And now fecal microbiome transplants are being done in humans uh, uh, to see, you know, to see the, the effects in a, in, in a, in a lot of um, clinical situations. So here, we can take uh, the microbiome from, <clears throat> excuse me, from an obese mouse and put it into a lean mouse. Genetically identical mice, the only difference that they have now is their microbiomes. Obese microbiome into a lean mouse, that lean mouse now becomes obese. Doesn't just take on the metabolism of an obese mouse, such as they're, you know, they're, they're, they become insulin insensitive, uh, their blood sugar levels fluctuate a lot, the, their appetite hormones change, but they, but they develop the whole behavior of an obese mouse. So they're eating all the food they can get their hands on. They're stealing food from their litter mates. They don't get on the wheel and run anymore. They just want to sit in the corner. So their, their physical activity patterns change. Their psychology around foods change. Their behavior, like their appetitive drive changes. Everything changes. Um, but it goes back the other way. You can take the microbiome from a lean mouse, put it into an obese mouse, and the obese mouse loses weight. <clears throat> And becomes more physically active and loses interest in the mouse version of junk food and et cetera, et cetera. So that is really, really interesting that you can change metabolism. You can change behavior just with a microbiome switch. Um, you can also do it purely with, uh, with behavior. So here's an example of you can take a microbiome from an introverted mouse, the kind of mouse that likes to, you know, uh, it likes to hide in, this, in the corner of the cage. It, it's not very social with its litter mates. It doesn't get on the wheel and run. It doesn't like to explore outside of the covered areas of the, of the, of the little housing unit. It doesn't go in the maze, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. You can take that introverted microbiome or the microbiome from an introverted mouse put it into an extroverted mouse, the mouse that's on the wheel and the mouse that's playing with his litter mates and the mouse that's exploring every nook and cranny of the, of the, of the mouse condo. Um, and and its, its behavior changes. It becomes an introvert. But again, it can go back the other way. You can switch those microbiomes and switch the behaviors. And when, when this work came out, it was really, really interesting, but there was still the question mark of, well, wait a minute. These are genetically identical inbred mice, and th th that that could never that could never happen in humans, right? These these wonderfully complex humans, we're way different than that. And yet, we can see studies like this, where you can take the microbiome from a depressed human. These are two different groups, two different cohorts, major depressive disorder and a control, non-depressed. And you can just see looking at, without getting into the discussion of what all these different bacterial uh, uh, measurements, microbiome measurements mean, you can see that just by a pattern difference, the, the pattern of microbiome in a major depressed subject is different than a, than a non-depressed subject. You can see it here. You can also see it here. The red dots are the major depression. The blue dots are the, are the control. So you can take a, a microbiome from, from a person, a human, with major depressive disorder and put it into a normal mouse, and that mouse develops depressive-like behaviors. We can never truly tell if the mouse is quote-unquote depressed, but it certainly exhibits depression. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't want to eat. It sits in the corner of the cage. It loses interest in you know, playing with a ball, you know, things that it used to like to do before. It really looks like it's depressed, right? And we can transmit that that emotion, that, that, that psychology, we can transmit it through the microbiome. So with all of that as sort of a lead up, the question becomes, well, great, that's all very interesting science. How do we take that science and how do we apply it to a normal situation where somebody wants to improve their mood or improve their motivation or improve their mental focus or bring back their vigor or you know any of the kinds of things that we can measure from a psychological standpoint? How do we do that? 
And so the first way that we did that, our original um, flagship product was the world's first gut brain access system called the Fundamentals Pack. So in that pack is three different products, one for the gut, one for the brain, and one for the axis in between. So the one for the gut's called Mentabiotics, the one for the brain is called Mentafocus, and the one for the axis is called Mentasync. And so you can buy those products separately, and people do. Um, you can use them separately, and, and, I, and I always do this. I say that if you were to use any one of these products separately, or any of the products I'm gonna talk about separately, you would, quote unquote, feel better. Right? And what I mean by that is feel better means that if you took just mentabiotics, you would feel better. But the feeling that you would get would more be along the lines of lowering your tension, lowering your stress, raising your resilience. Right? Mentafocus is also going to help you feel better, but that's going to be more around mental clarity and memory. And if your brain is working better, you're going to feel better in that way. Meant to sync improves vigor by about 20% because it works primarily on your immune system to prime your immune system and help you send signals more efficiently across that part of your, of your gut-brain axis. So you'll feel better with meant to sync in those ways. You'll feel better with mentabiotics in those ways. You'll feel better with meant to focus in those ways. And so we decided we would put it all together in one pack, gut-brain axis. And when we launched it in 2018, we won this award called the Nutra Award, which is given once a year to one company with one product that represents the best new finished product in the entire industry. So 2018, we won that. And the reason we won it was it was it was the microbiome had j microbiome research had just gotten to the point where we felt it was ready for prime time that you could harness it and you could build it into something that somebody could apply in their life. And 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 what we mean by that is that it addresses each of the of the levels across the gut brain axis that potentially could be out of balance because the challenge with mood state research is that people know when they feel crummy they just don't necessarily know why they feel crummy right they, they in fact that's the number one reason that people will come to see any of us who are watching this video right now right their 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 energy is low they have some brain fog they they're they're not motivated they're not necessarily depressed. They're not necessarily anxious. They're that person with languishing that I said before, um, or 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 you know they just they just feel kind of blah, and that blah might be because their neurotransmitters are off. And if it, if if that's it, we can we can solve that. We can solve that in the brain. There's all kinds of ways we can change neurotransmitter balance. We can give them pine bark extract. We can give them pomegranate extract. We can increase blood flow to their brain with 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 you know nitrate enhancers like like noni or pomegranate or 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 beetroot. There's a there, there's a lot of ways we can solve that problem. Nootropics, for example, we're going to talk about those in this in this presentation. But what if it's not the neurotransmitters that are out of balance? What if it's something that's blocking the neurotransmitters like inflammation? Maybe they're over inflamed and we need to get rid of the inflammation so that their neurotransmitters will work more efficiently. Well, we have we have a we have a way that we you know in this pack that that solves inflammation. We can also ask the question next of well, wait a minute, where is that inflammation coming from in the first place? It might be because their immune system is overactive or agitated or or um, or or just disrupted. So if we prime the immune system, we get the immune system in, in balance. If the immune system is balanced, we 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 remove a big source of inflammation. If we remove that inflammation, then their neurotransmitters work better. So you get the idea. We go all the way down. One of the things that can set the immune system off is leaky gut. So we improve gut integrity. Make sure that the gut is not permeable or is semi-permeable the way it's supposed to be. Um, and, and maybe the gut is out of balance and you have that leaky gut because your microbiome is out of balance. And maybe if your microbiome is out of balance, you're not making the good neurotransmitters and you're making too many of the inflammatory cytokines, right? So any of those or all of those could be out of balance. And that's why Fundamentals Pack is so impactful in so many different ways for so many different people. Uh, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about what's in it, like how we get those benefits, but, but basically it's this, that we use specific strains of probiotic bacteria that have been clinically validated to, to improve mood, improve tension, improve stress. And then we partner those up with prebiotic fibers, specific structures of prebiotic fibers 
that these bacterial strains will use to do their job. And those fibers will reduce stress and improve resilience. We also have a whole range across these three products of phytonutrients, what we call phytobiotics, plant extracts. These phytobiotics are actually patent pending right now for the effect of, of improving mood by enhancing signaling across the, across the axis portion of the gut-brain axis. And those would be things like theanine and pine bark and apple polyphenols and grapeseed polyphenols and there's a there's a there's a whole range of them that we can bring to bear on the problem and so you know once we do all of that then we do research and we publish these 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 studies in peer-reviewed scientific publications and and scientific presentations so you know we've got a, we've got another slide deck where where you'll have all the different research um links that you can click on and so whoever shared this with you you can you can ask them for that it's a it's a it's a separate one there's there's one of them there i'm going to refer to a few of them as i as i go through here but we have we have one document that has that has all of them in there and we and we update that from time to time as we need to so when i say probiotics it's really really important to get across this idea, which is something called probiotic strain specificity. And if there's one concept that you take away from this entire hour and a half or so that we're gonna be together, it's, it's this, probiotic strain specificity. And what this means is that specific strains of bacteria have specific benefits, or said the other way, Specific benefits are delivered by specific strains of bacteria. And if you don't know the strain, you have no idea what it's supposed to do. None. You don't know it. Well, you don't know anything about it. You don't know what benefit it's supposed to give you. You don't know how many of them, how many colony forming units you need to take. You don't know, is it uh, susceptible to stomach acid? You don't know if it's susceptible to temperature. Do you have to keep it cold or can it be you know, stored at room temperature? You don't know anything about it. So if you only knew lactobacillus rhamnosus, you could not tell me what it's going to do. You have to know this last part, which is the strain designation. So probiotic, probiotic nomenclature is that this is the genus, this is the species, this is the strain. And I would say even to this day, 90% of the products on the market do not tell you the strain designation. And again, if you, if you don't know the strain, you don't know what it's supposed to do. Here's an example. This is Lactobacillus rhamnosus R0011. This strain designation tells me that this is a stress-reducing strain of bacteria. We know, we know the mechanism is that it lowers cortisol and it raises GABA. So lowering cortisol is going to help people be less stressed. You're turning down a negative signal. And raising GABA, you're turning up a good signal. It's going to help people to be more relaxed. So less stressed and more relaxed with the same bacteria. That's why we can say that this is a stress-reducing bacteria. Here's, a, here's, a, here's an example of strain specificity. There's another lactobacillus rhamnosus that we use in another product called um, strain designation is LR32. That one helps with gut motility, meaning it can help regulate the speed at which food moves through your gastrointestinal tract. So if you're a little bit constipated, it can help you go to the bathroom. If you have a little bit of diarrhea, it can help slow down you going to the bathroom, right? So motility enhancement, right? It, it, can, it can speed up or slow down. Uh, there's another strain that's in every grocery store in America. It's a, it's a product called Culturel, very good product. It uses a strain called Lactobacillus rhamnosus GG is the strain designation. That one is really good for traveler's diarrhea. It also helps a little bit with the immune system. So if that's your problem, by all means, go get that one. There's another strain uh, that we might use in the future. Um, it helps with uh, vaginal yeast infections. It's called Lactobacillus rhamnosus GR1 is the strain designation. Wonderful for women who have recurrent vaginal yeast infections, right? Take that for a week or so, yeast infections get all cleared up. But think about that. So Lactobacillus rhamnosus, I just talked about R0011 as the anti-stress one, LG30 or L32, LR32 um, as, the, um, as, the, as the motility, constipation or diarrhea, GG is the traveler's diarrhea, GR1 as the yeast infection, right? All those different benefits, all from just a different strain designation. So it's really, really important that you know the strain. Um, I, I actually can't, can't recommend to, 
products that don't have a strain designation because it's a it's a total crapshoot, right? I, I say to people all the time, if you pick up a bottle and you see, oh, it's got five different bacteria and it's it's fifty billion and it's on sale and it's all all these good good reasons to to to, to choose it. If you don't know the strain designation, you might as well just close your eyes and reach up onto the shelf and grab any old one because it's going to have the same level of effectiveness, right? You have to know the strain. So, And once you know the strain, you know what the main benefit's going to be. You know its susceptibility to stomach acid and to temperature, and you know what its shelf life is going to be. And you know do you have to supplement it at a billion CFUs or 10 billion CFUs or 50 billion CFUs. Like You'll know that based on the strain designation. So what we do here in this product, so this is the, these are the bacteria that we have in Mentabiotics, which is part of Fundamentals. Um, we have one strain that is good for reducing stress, another strain that's good for enhancing calmness, and another strain that's good for enhancing mood. And the reason we did this is so that some one person could take that mentabiotics and they could feel better no matter what their problem was. A lot of times when you feel crummy, like I was saying before, you don't necessarily know, am I feeling crummy because of a serotonin mood issue or am I feeling crummy because more of a calmness, feelings of anxiety, sort of a thing? A lot of times those are, those will overlap. Or am I just stressed out? You know, and that's and that's leading to me feeling the way I'm feeling. So our idea was let's get people feeling more holistically better in all these different ways, and and we can do it. We can do it with this combination. So these are the three strains that we use um, of of bacteria. We don't stop there though. The base of that mentabiotics powder is a base of prebiotic fibers. So prebiotics are the food that bacteria will use as their fuel source. The reason we eat high fiber, or reason we're supposed to eat high fiber foods, isn't for us. It's for the bacteria. That's their preferred fuel source. And so you know, eating more fiber is a good thing, right? If you can get more whole grains and more brightly colored fruits and vegetables and all that kind of stuff, hallelujah. But these are targeted prebiotic fibers, isomalto-oligosaccharide, an IMO, a galacto-oligosaccharide, a GOS, and a galactomannan. Those words in parentheses refer to the structure of the fiber, and the structure of the fiber is indicative of what bacteria is going to preferentially want to eat that as its as its fuel source. Not all bacteria eat all prebiotics, um, at, at, at least at the same efficiency, right? They have there there are bacteria that prefer certain prebiotics, or said the other way, there are certain prebiotics that feed certain kinds of bacteria. So the reason we chose these particular three, there's a you know dozen or so prebiotics that we could choose. Um, sometimes prebiotic fibers um, uh, have a tendency to give people gas and bloating because when the bacteria start feeding on that fiber, you produce like one of the one of the one of the um, one of the end products of, of that fermentation is gas. And so that can sometimes take a couple of days or a couple of weeks for people to get adapted to. These are low gas producing um, prebiotics, but they're also prebiotics that have been studied to show that they can increase resilience. So the, the, the people eat these, people supplement with these uh, in, in, in the clinical trials, their microbiome diversity improves. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So more good bacteria grow, the bad bacteria sort of die off because they sort of grow on processed foods and junk foods and sugars and things like that. So you start eating more of these, you grow more good guys, the good guys displace the bad guys. Um, but but, but but they do it in a way that don't produce gas, but instead produce a lot of the uh, happier signaling molecules, you know, more of the serotonins and the dopamines and the GABAs and the short chain fatty acids and things like that. So that's that's good. You're getting you're getting more of the bacteria, right? So you're changing the structure of the microbiome, but you're also changing the function of the microbiome in terms of the production of those signaling molecules. And then so you could feel better because you took the bacteria probiotics. You could feel better because you took the fibers, the prebiotics, but we also go the next level that most companies don't and make sure that we have matched these up for that preferential metabolism, so to speak, that, that these fibers that we use are the ones that these bacteria want to use. 
okay um, so you know you can you can see you, something like an IMO feeds all the good bacteria the lactobacillus and the bifidobacterium whereas something like a like a GOS feeds primarily the bifidobacterium and we want both of those right we want the lactobacillus for certain reasons we want the bifidobacterium for certain reasons and that's why it's important for us to actually measure the microbiome in our clinical trials. So here's one example of a study that we've done. This was on our fundamentals pack where we just had people use it as recommended, right? Here's the pack. Please, you know, we, we recruited people that were moderately stressed. We followed them for four weeks a month. Uh, we said, take the supplement as directed, one serving a day. We're going to measure your microbiome at the beginning. We're going to measure your mood state at, uh, at the beginning. And then after the supplementation period of four weeks, we're going to measure you again and see what happens. And we published the research here in Functional Foods and Health and Disease. And here's, here's what we found. We found that the microbiome was better, right? Exactly what we would expect. Um, we didn't in this trial, we didn't study people with depression. We didn't study with major depressive disorder. We didn't study people with generalized anxiety disorder. We didn't study people with diagnosed burnout or PTSD or anything like that because those studies had already been done. Those studies have been done on the individual ingredients. We wanted to see what this pack would do out in the real world with those people who just feel stressed out and blah and sleep deprived, right? So, so that's, that's the population of people we're going for. And what we found was after, after 30 days of supplementation, their microbiome was better. Um, and we can measure. We can measure well, how is it better. Well, lactobacillus went up 28%. Bifidobacterium went up 30%. Their overall composite score was 17% higher. This is sort of an overall diversity, overall resilience score, which averages together the good guys, the bad guys, the ratios between the, you know, the different families of bacteria. So on every parameter we looked at, the microbiome was better. Um, I, I mentioned on the last slide that lactose are good for certain reasons and bifidos are good for certain reasons. We could look at that and we can see, well, all right, um, lactobacillus is good for making the environment of your gut just slightly acidic, and that's good for the bifidos because that's the environment they want to see. And if it's a slightly acidic environment, then more bifidos are going to grow. And if more bifidos grow and you give them the right prebiotic fibers, they're going to produce more of those signaling molecules, the short-chain fatty acids and the neurotransmitters and things like that. And as a result of this microbiome looking better, people felt better. And this is what really, really matters, right? I joke with people all the time. Nobody wakes up on the last day of one of our studies and says, oh, my bifidobacterium feels really good today, right? You don't feel that. You feel the result of having a good internal on-demand, in-demand, uh, like an uh, internal on-demand uh, natural pharmacy. You feel that in terms of your mood. Your tension is lower, your depression score is lower, your anger, fatigue, confusion, all your negative mood states are lower, coming from a place of being moderately stressed. Change your microbiome, all your negative mood states go down, right? You're, 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 you're feeling less bad, but you're also feeling more good. So this is vigor. The opposite of vigor would have been burnout, right? So we could have put burnout here and had all negative mood states. But the point that I want to really make here is that we can turn down a negative signal and somebody feels less bad, and that's a way of making them, you know, improving how they feel. Or we can take a good signal and turn it up. So amplify a good or de-emphasize a bad. And what we're doing here with the microbiome is doing both of those simultaneously. And that's when people start to feel really, really good. The problem with antidepressants, as I was talking about earlier, is that they tend to just make you feel less bad, right? So they, and, and a lot of times they make you feel less of anything. And that's why most people don't like to be on them long term. And a lot of people have trouble getting off of them after being on them long term. But if we can do both of those from the perspective of this dynamic pharmacy, which is your microbiome, that can help people feel normal again. That can help people thrive. That can help people go, yeah, I'm back, right? And that's a really, really good thing that we can do for our patients and our clients. So um, I mentioned a little bit already about the, uh, uh, about the specific bacteria that we're talking about, the, um, the, 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 the probiotics, right? Specific probiotic strains. And you can see those here. And I mentioned the specific strain or the specific um, – uh, uh, prebiotic fibers, and here you're only seeing two of them. You're seeing uh, Bimuno Goss and uh, the Sunfiber Galactomannan. 
um, we've since uh, reformulated that Mentabiotics product to have that third one in there. So you have you have three pro probiotics and three prebiotics with that IMO. But then what you see for the rest of this chart, this is taken right from one of our one of our research publications. You see in Table One, you see all of the phytonutrients, right? You see all the other things that we're giving that will help that signaling process across the gut-brain axis. So you see the ingredient, you see its main purpose or effect, and you see where it's sourced from in the world, right? It really is a, it really is a true global supply chain. So some of these things are working in the brain, some of these things are working in the axis, some of these things are working on the, on the, on the, um, on the integrity of the gut, the actual lining of the gut. Some of them are working in inside other cells. So it's it's a lot. And I and I and I say that and I show you this slide because if we want to get somebody to feel holistically better, we have to think about the gut brain axis and the heart brain axis as a system. And we have to think about like what I said earlier, that how you feel is not just in your head. It's also in your gut, it's also in your heart, it's also in your immune system, it's also in your gut integrity, et cetera, et cetera, because that's what the science is showing us. The science is showing us is that, sure, we can help somebody feel somewhat better by working in the, in the brain. We can help somebody feel somewhat better by working in the gut and somewhat better by working in the immune system. But once we put that all together, that's where they feel holistically better. And that's where we see mood state changes, like what, what I showed you on the last slide are, you know, indexes are you know negative indexes are going down 50% positive indexes are coming up you know f to 20 or 30 or 40% right those are meaningful changes that can really get somebody to like function differently in their in their life so like i like i said and i'll say this over and over again we we educate as much as we can about these ideas right so we talk about different strains we we present our research at different conferences this particular poster was one that was uh, presented at the International Society for Nutritional Psychiatry Research. An organization like this didn't even exist probably five or six years ago um, because nutritional psychology or nutritional psychiatry wasn't even a scientific discipline because we didn't have the tools to measure this kind of stuff um, j just a few short years ago, and now we do. So, you know, we've published it in peer-reviewed publications. We've presented at longevity conferences. That you know, so this this work is starting to get out there. It's starting to change how we think about mental wellness. But then, you know, all of human health. Like I like I said before, here's another one of the studies that we did, and this is an interesting study because remember when I said earlier that my perspective on supplements is that supplements can be the first piece of the puzzle in that in that sense paradigm, right? We can use the supplement to help somebody with their energy and motivation so they exercise more. They know they're supposed to exercise more. We have all told them they need to exercise more or be more physically active, and they don't. But if we can use a supplement to improve their energy levels and their motivation, maybe they do that. If we can use a supplement to help with somebody's appetite and their stress cravings and their and their munchies, then maybe they're more likely to stay on the good diet that they know they're supposed to be on. It's not that we need to educate people more about eating right and moving more and getting eight hours of sleep. They know that, and they've heard it a billion times from us and everybody else. Um, but if we can help them to act on that more, uh, more efficiently, more effectively, that could be a game changer. And that's what this study was. So in this trial, what we wanted to do was – do pretty much the same thing we did with that first trial. Change the microbiome, change their mood. But what we said in this trial to the subjects, we said, we're just going to measure your biochemistry. We're going to take blood from you, and we're going to measure cholesterols and blood sugars and inflammatory markers. We're going to uh, take your saliva, and we're going to measure stress hormones. We're going to take your poop samples, and we're going to measure the microbiome. We're going to have you fill out all these surveys, and we're going to look at your stress and your mood and all that kind of stuff. And so, but we said to them, please don't change your diet patterns. Don't change your exercise regimen. Don't try sleeping more. Just go through your normal life for six weeks and we're going to track you over time. But what we were actually looking at is the lifestyle behaviors, right? So we're looking at all of this. Here's the, here are the results from the trial. We found, as we, as we expected, that good bacteria changed. So lots more good bacteria, bad bacteria went down. There was a nice change in the ratios of different metabolic bacteria. I'll show you the I'll show you the graphs in a second. 
all their metabolism changed in a positive direction. Um, stress hormones went down. Uh, blood sugar levels went down. Um, cholesterols went down, etc. I'll show you those data. Mood state changed. All the negative mood states went down. Positive mood states went up. But what we also found was that these people were choosing a better diet because we did a three-day diet recall. Um, that they w without without trying to, right? It was a subconscious change. We told them, we instructed them to not change their diets, and yet they couldn't help themselves but eat a healthier diet because they felt better. They, we gave them watch watches, uh, activity tracker watches, Garmin Vivo Smarts, that track their, their stress levels and track their movements and track their steps and track their hours of sleep and minutes in REM and all that kind of stuff. They slept better. They moved more. Their lifestyles were better while they were supplementing than they were before the supplementation, even when, when we told them not to. And the only thing we can conclude from that is that because they were feeling better in all these different ways, they were more inclined to act on those healthy decisions that they already knew that they needed to be making. Okay, so it was really, really exciting thing to do, which, which, which you know, just dovetails with exactly how we think supplements should be used anyway within the context of their overall healthy lifestyle pattern. So here's here's some of the data slides. Um, these slides are all recorded so and posted. So if you want to go and get the slides and really dig into the numbers, uh, uh, you're 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 certainly welcome to do that. If I if I go through these too quickly. So we looked at we looked at body weight and muscle mass. They didn't lose any any um, they didn't lose any weight over time, but they also didn't lose any muscle mass over time. This wasn't a weight loss trial per, per se, but they did lose uh, about two percent um, total body fat. Uh, so that's good. So, and that speaks to the fact that they were more physically active. They were eating a better diet. They were sleeping better over the over the course of those six weeks, even though they weren't on a fitness regimen, so to speak. Right? Again, because they were feeling better, they were making good choices. When we look at their microbiome, we can see all of these positive changes. Um, their overall composite score after six weeks was six percent improved, which is a which is a very significant, very meaningful change. Um, and then this composite score is made up of, of by averaging all of these different numbers plus plus some others. So bifidobacterium went up, one kind of good bacteria. Lactobacillus went up, another kind of good bacteria, but good for different reasons, like I described earlier. Acromancia, a really, really important keystone species of bacteria that lives in the mucus lining of your of your gastrointestinal tract, and as a signal, if your if your acromancia is high, that means you have a good mucus lining. If you have a good mucus lining, that generally means you have a good gut integrity lining. Your enterocytes, your your actual tissue of your of your gut barrier function is strong. Um, usually if we see this low or we see it not abundant or we see it undetectable, that's a signal that somebody has leaky gut. So we saw 90% improvement here. So acromancy is not just a signal for leaky gut or not. Uh, and here it would show not after, you know, after a 90% increase. Um, but it's also uh, involved in metabolism. It's involved in mood state. It's involved in immune system regulation. It's involved in a lot of stuff. So you want more acromancia. So this is a really nice number for us to see. Um, this one that you can see going up 62%. I don't know if you can see this behind my little video of me, but this is um, – this is a strain called uh, Streptococcus thermophilus, which is involved in your immune system regulation. And so 62% uh, improvement there suggests a stronger immune system vigilance, which is, which is always going to be a good thing. And stronger immune system, if it's, if it's properly primed, like I was talking about before, uh, is associated with a higher level of vigor. Um, which is which is the opposite state of burnout. So that that's that suggests better resilience if your immune system is more uh, more more vigilant. Uh, here's Figure Two B, which is metabolism. So with your metabolism, one of the cool things we can look at from the perspective of the microbiome is a family of bacteria called firmicutes, which are really good at harvesting calories from your food. So when you eat a meal, if you have a lot of firmicutes, they're going to be really good at getting the calories out of your food and into your body and store, typically stored in your, in your fat. If you have a lot of bacteroides, they're less good at that. 
So they will still harvest calories, but they're less efficient at it. So if you have a lot of firmicutes, you're more likely to be overweight. If you have low bacteroides, you're more likely to be overweight. And then if you have the if you have the double whammy, high firmicutes and and low bacteroides, you're very likely to be overweight, or you're very likely to be um, have a tendency towards weight gain. Let me say it that way. So you could either lower firmicutes to to reduce weight or raise bacteroides to reduce weight or prevent weight gain. And and we were able to show both of those. So 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 firmicutes went down a little bit, bacteroides went up a little bit. And this F to B ratio, the ratio between good harvesters and poor harvesters, is used as a as a metabolic index, right? As a as a as a predisposition to obesity index, if you will. And so the reduction of 14% speaks to a very, very nice metabolic benefit of the, of the, of the blend of um, phytonutrients that we gave. Uh, here is a measurement called butyrate kinase. So butyrate kinase is, is uh, the enzyme that's responsible for the production of short-chain fatty acids, butyrate being, being one of those, being one of those uh, short-chain fatty acids. Um, so th the, the fact that we saw an 89% increase here shows that the, micro, the, the entire microbiome has a much improved capacity to make short-chain fatty acids post-supplementation than pre-supplementation. And that's good because of all the things I said before about short-chain fatty acids. They're nearly miraculous in terms of their biological effects. They're good for the brain. They're good for the immune system. They're good for your metabolism. They're good for your, for your blood sugar control. They're thought to maybe um, help to support mitochondria, which is cellular energy production. They're thought to um, uh, uh, support... Uh, uh, um, calorie burning fat burning in a type of fat called brown fat they are they are miraculous l little compounds that we don't get enough of primarily because we don't eat enough fiber short chain fatty acids come from the metabolism of fiber by the bacteria so here's a way that we're increasing butyrate or, or the potential for butyrate production the machinery of butyrate production at the level of the microbiome with a with a supplementation regimen that is probiotics and prebiotics and phytobiotics. Cortisol levels went down, cortisol being the primary stress hormone. This is always a good thing to see. 11% reduction in overall cortisol. Blood chemistries all went in the in the right direction. So total cholesterol went down, LDL bad cholesterol went down, triglycerides went down, glucose went down, and really nicely, even though this wasn't statistically significant, this HDL, good cholesterol, did go up. And that's and the reason I point this out is that typically the only thing that will really increase HDL is exercise. Um, and so it could be maybe that because these people were more, more motivated and were more physically active, even though we asked them not to be, um, may, you know, maybe, that is a, maybe that's an exercise effect that we're seeing there. Hard to, hard to kind of tease out because they, uh, they didn't listen to us. <laughs> Um, and then uh, cardiac risk profiles went down. This is a ratio between total cholesterol and HDL good cholesterol. So a 7% drop in six weeks is actually a really, really nice drop. Um, so, you know, the numbers, look, the numbers look really, really good over time. Let me see why this isn't changing. There we go. Um, this is looking at the profile of mood states. So a lot of times when people know that we're looking at mood, um, they're thinking that we're just asking the subjects, you know, how are you feeling? You know, are you feeling less stressed? Are you feeling happier? Are you feeling more resilient? We're actually using a technique called profile of mood states, P-O-M-S, or shorthand is POMS. Um, this is the most validated way. It's probably been used in 3,000, 4,000 different psychology studies over the years. It's the gold standard way to measure uh, mood states in non-depressed, non-anxious people. I'm going to show you later in the presentation some other surveys that are used in studies of depression, in studies of, of, of anxiety, in studies of ADHD. Um, but this this is not one. This is a non-diagnostic tool, but it's really sensitive to interventions like this. And so you can see depression index, which is just a mood index. It's not measuring the disease depression. Confusion, which is brain fog. Fatigue, anger or irritability tension are all these negative mood states are going down just like the first study that I showed you and then vigor is going up just like the first study that I showed you um, this is global mood state global mood state is sort of an overall average of all of these 
negative mood states and positive mood state subscales. Um, and this could be considered like an overall well-being index. And on, on this particular parameter, a lower number is a better number. And you can see that global well-being was 17% better, uh, or global mood state was was was. Uh, was 17% better after after that intervention, and so that you know the, the 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 sort of conclusion from this six week trial. The first one was a four week trial. This one was a six week trial. Is that uh, we that optimizing the gut brain axis improved both metabolism and and enhanced mental wellness. Right. So we saw all these metabolic parameters change. We saw all these psychological parameters change, and then we also saw all those. Uh, behavioral parameters pr parameters change because, and this is our this is our interpretation of it. We use the supplements. People felt better because they felt better. They acted on making the making the better lifestyle choices because they felt better because their microbiome was better because they supplemented the right way. So that's the that's the sort of moral moral of that story. I want to I want to mention one thing real quick before I move off of the microbiome stuff for a second, um, and that is. That, that in my world, right, somebody who studies the microbiome, studies mental wellness, what I just described is, is well known, right? When I describe this at scientific conferences, other scientists who do the kind of same kind of work that I do go, yeah, well, we've known this for five or six or seven years. Like this is, this is, this is well, well, well tread uh, 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 paths, right? It's, it's been repeated and repeated and repeated, and we all understand this. Um, it hasn't flipped over, certainly into the public domain, right? Most, peop most people, our clients and our customers and our patients, don't necessarily know that what you do in the gut is going to have an effect in the brain or the immune system or the cardiovascular system or your, your metabolism. It, it, like they, they don't have a, a, an appreciation for that necessarily. It also hasn't made its way over into the medical field. So when I, and I, you know, when I go and I present at medical conferences, whether it's at IFM or it's at um, NAMI or MHA or any of these you know, more like sort of medical conferences, sometimes people know the microbiome. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they know leaky gut. Sometimes they don't. Um, sometimes it sounds completely foreign and 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 ludicrous that you could do something at the level of the bacteria in your gut, and it's going to change your overall mood and mental function and performance. Like that doesn't compute a lot of times unless you've been exposed to the research, right? Um, I wanted I wanted I want to show you an, uh, 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 just another place where that is where that is very true. So. These studies have been done so many times in in mice and in rats and now in humans that it's 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 I don't want to say it's like it's like connect the dots that easy but it's pretty well know like step by step by step what's going to happen whether it's a probiotic treatment or whether it's a prebiotic treatment or increasingly a postbiotic treatment or a phytobiotic treatment I want to show you one that that I hope will blow your mind if you're not aware of this research already so this is probiotic treatment of mice with autism features. Um, so we could also cross this out and say prebiotic treatment of mice with autism features. Autism is one of those systemic dysfunctions, right? I mentioned a few minutes ago that we have to think of the, the gut brain axis, the heart brain axis as a system if we want to get the best results for our clients and patients. So we can intervene in the brain, we can intervene in the gut, we can intervene someplace in between in the in the axis. That's what these studies do. And autism is a really um, uh, I don't want to say severe, but it's a it's a it, it's definitely a condition that has that has um, places that can be rebalanced across that entire that entire system, right? There's things we can do in the brain to improve. There's things we can do in the gut to improve. There's things we can do in the axis to improve. And we know that if we alter the microbiome, that's going to change the signals. It's going to change the, the integrity of the, of the barrier, right? Whether it's leaky or whether it's tight junctions. Um, it's, it, as a result of that, it's going to change the metabolites that get through into the systemic circulation or into the endocannabinoid system or into the, into the immune system. And as a result of that, it's going to change behavior. And so this has been done over and over and over again in rodents. It's been done several times in humans. And so like we know exactly what's going to happen. Change the microbiome, improve the integrity, change the metabolic signals, change the behavior. And so these two studies were done, let me see, this one was in 2018, so not that long ago. 
This one was done in 2019, 2018 also. Um, so, you know, just pre-pandemic, which, you know, good, good time to be studying psychology. What both of these studies did was they applied a prebiotic fiber as the intervention in children with autism. The one on the top was done in the UK. They used a GOS, a lacto-oligosaccharide. They actually used the brand called Bimuno. It's the same one that we use in our products. This one was done in Japan, used a hydrolyzed guar gum uh, prebiotic fiber, which is also called a galactomannan. The brand they used here is called Sun Fiber. It's the same brand that we use in our products. Um, I didn't mention, um, when I had the fundamentals pack up there, we have a fundamentals pack that won the Nutra Award. And we have a kid's fundamental, so a kid's version of that same pack that's just one product. So instead of three products, it's one product. It's naturally flavored. It's naturally um, sweetened, no sugar. Uh, tastes like fruit punch when you mix it up into, into, a, into a beverage. That was a finalist for probiotic of the year, the year that that, 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 that was launched, uh, which, was, which was the year after fundamentals. So fundamentals in 2018. Uh, kids fundamentals in 2019 these studies coming uh, coming out in 2018 and 2019 and what they found was exactly what I showed you on that last slide but this was done in children Ch give them a fiber intervention here prebiotic fiber change the microbiome change the gut integrity change the signals in the axis change the behavior of the kids so the kids had better 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 sociability um, they had they had less acting out. They had less uh, irritation. They had less irritability. They had less stomach aches and constipation. They they were they behaved better, all because of step by step by step by step with an intervention at the level of the microbiome. And the reason I make a big deal about this is not because like I said before, like we're not trying to treat depression. We're not trying to treat anxiety disorders. We're also not trying to treat autism. But these data are out there. They exist. And if you have clients and if you, you have patients that are in those situations, they need to know that there are natural options that they can bring to bear on the problem of feeling happier, feeling less tense, feeling less, feeling less irritable, be, you know, behaving better. Um, those are all impactful things that we can just we can talk about it. And we can say, look, if you want to improve your mood, if you want to lower your stress, if you want to improve your resilience, talk about it in a very positive way. But these data are out there. And 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 think about this: if these research groups in the UK and in Japan, um, twenty years ago, had tried to say, hey, we're going to use fiber as an intervention for autism behaviors. Um, it would have it would have sounded absolutely completely ludicrous, but that's be that's before we knew anything about the microbiome. And now we know what the microbiome does. We know how it, how it impacts on gut integrity. We know how that impacts on signals going across the axis. We know how those signals impact on overall feelings and behavior and performance. Right. So it's a really really exciting time that we can harness this kind of stuff, and we can and we can use it. We can apply it to help the people that we work with you know, perform, perform their best. So that's fundamentals. So a lot of times people will take those products, um, the two powdered products, the mentabiotics, which is unflavored, and the kids fundamentals, which is fruit punch flavored, and they'll combine it with other products like Edge is a product I'll talk about now, and another product we have called Energy Plus, which is our healthy energy drink product. We've got a couple of versions of that. Um, into something that they call happy juice. So it's three powders. People mix it all up into one, one, uh, you know, one, one jar, you know, one, one glass, and mix it up. And you know, sometimes they'll throw in grape, and sometimes watermelon, and sometimes dragon fruit, and sometimes pomegranate lime. And people have all their different concoctions, and they call it happy juice because they get these benefits that I just talked about: the resilience and the you know, lowering of, of the negative mood states and the raising of the positive mood states, but then they get motivation from edge and they get energy from energy. And a lot of people just describe that as they feel happier. They feel more resilient. They feel like they can get a better handle on their day. So I want to talk about some of those products. So this one, edge, when we launched this, this was a finalist for uh, an award called the Nexty Awards. So Fundamentals won the Nutra Award. Uh, Kids Fundamentals um, was a finalist for Probiotic of the Year. 
This was a finalist for the Next D. Um, and this is a really cool product because it's a non-stimulant way to increase motivation. Motivation is different than energy. Motivation is um, it's a it's it's more of an actionable kind of energy, right? People feel like getting up and getting something done. And we do it without caffeine. We do it without sugar. This is sugar-free, naturally flavored. We've got a watermelon flavor. We've got a we've got a grape flavor. The main active ingredients here are mango leaf, which is really high in these anti-inflammatory compounds called xanthones, lychee fruit, really high in polyphenols that can help with glycation or blood sugar control. Um, that's going to be really good for your brain. It's going to be really good for your muscles. So once you get motivated from the from the mango leaf, you're going to be able to apply that motivation into into mental work or physical work. Um, and then this last one is a is palm fruit bioactives from a water soluble fraction of the palm fruit, um, and this uh, this helps with oxidation. It's it's high in these very unique. Uh, flavonoids called shikimic acid flavonoids, um, and there's dozen, dozens of clinical trials on 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 uh, you know across these three these three uh, ingredients. One thing I should mention is that you know for health professionals or scientists or whoever's watching this right now, uh, for each of our products we have a document called the technical data sheet. So the technical data sheets will go through all of the research abstracts on all of the different ingredients. So you can go and see, well, what does palm fruit do and what's in it and how does it work? What's its mechanisms of action? And what lychee and, and, and mango leaf, right? So you can see all of those clinical studies on sports performance and cognitive performance and glucose balance and all that kind of stuff. So you can see exactly what it is, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in the spirit of being as transparent as possible to say, Here's what it is. Here's what it is. Here's how we've combined it. Here's how you can combine that product with another product in terms of st stacking and things like that. So in 2022, this was a finalist for Best New Product. There were over 1,100 entries that year, and we made it down into the last five, which was, which was really cool for us. So here's how they work. Three patented ingredients, more than 50 clinical trials uh, you know, across those across those. Um, three, three um, um, bioactive ingredients. We put it into a base of prebiotic fiber, which is really important, right? So you could call this a nootropic. This is a brain booster. This is a, you know, sometimes people talk about them as, you know, being like, you know, natural smart drugs. And some of the nootropics out there are actual drugs. You know, some of them are illegal drugs that you can, you can get on the internet. But this is a natural way to do it to enhance creativity and memory and motivation and attention and all those sorts of things. We use that same isofiber, that isomalto oligosaccharide that we use in fundamentals that I talked about before. We use that same that same prebiotic fiber here. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a drink mix, right? It's a, one of them is grape flavored. One of them is watermelon flavored. Um, and it, it, it's, it's sugar-free, naturally sweetened, um, naturally flavored, all the, th all the things that you would want. And the, it's the, it's the prebiotic fiber that is sort of the, the, the carrying agent, if you will, of these, of these, uh, of these bioactives that help you know, help with the things that I just said. Here's another little, here's another little graphic showing what the mango leaf does, what the lychee fruit does, what the palm fruit does, and they're short, sourced from around the world. Um, there's a little video online somewhere um, that is called "From the Source," where I go through each one of these, where they come from, how we harvest them, what the extracts look like, why we partnered with the, you know this particular supplier versus that particular supplier. So if you're, if you're interested in getting into the nitty gritty on the sourcing side of where, this com where all these ingredients come from, that would be a good, that would be a good resource for you. Um, and you can, you, know, you, can, you can see some of the nitty gritty there. Um, so that's, uh, that's our edge that people will very often mix with. So you can take edge separately on its own. That can be the only product you take, and you'll feel better, again in quotes, in those ways. But those are different ways of feeling better than what I just described for fundamentals or for kids' fundamentals. Okay, So hopefully you're, hopefully you're getting, that, getting that idea. Here's meant to heart. This is a different way of helping people feel better. So fundamentals is all about the gut-brain axis, and those signals are primarily biochemical in nature, right? They're neurotransmitters and short-chain fatty acids and those sorts of things, right? So by changing those signals, we can help people feel better. 
Meant to Heart is a nutritional approach to work on a whole nother set of signals, which are electrical or electromagnetic in nature. And I'll describe those in just a second. But the, here are the main ingredients. This is bergamot orange. Looks like a lime, but it's actually a little orange. Uh, this is astaxanthin. This is palm fruit bioactives again. Um, this, I don't know if you can see it behind my little video, uh, but this is black, black cumin seed oil. Um, they all work in different ways to improve heart health and heart efficiency. We also have coenzyme Q10 in here, um, and that improves the, the sort of the strength of the of the contraction, uh, 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 contractile activity of the heart. And you put all that together, and meant to heart is absolutely a heart health product, but it's also a sports performance product. It's also a brain health product. It's also a mood supporter. And we actually just received a patent on that, on the idea that you could use a nutritional to improve heart function, and as a result of that, improve psychological function, cognitive function, and emotions. And I'll, I'll, I'll differentiate those as we, as we go through here, okay? So this idea of the heart and the brain talking to each other, we've known about this since at least the 1950s. We've known that depressed patients have a higher risk for a heart attack, and we know that heart attack patients have a higher risk for depression. But back in those days, it was thought to be sort of behavioral. You know, if you're, if you're depressed, you're probably not taking care of yourself, and that's why you had a heart attack. And if you had a heart attack, you're, you know, of, co of course you're sad because you're in the hospital. You just had this major life event. Of course you're going to be depressed. And then it morphed into like the 90s. It was more about inflammation. And if your heart is inflamed and your brain is inflamed, of course that's going to lead to a heart attack or depression. And, you know, that, that made a lot of sense. And now we know that, cortisol is involved. Now we know that um, that inflammation certainly is involved. Now we know that um, electrical activity is involved. We can measure the, the rhythm of the heart, right? Heart, heart rate, uh, heart beats. We can measure the electrical activity of the heart, of, 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 of the brain, brain waves, you know, so we'll, we'll put heart rate straps on people. We'll put brain, brain wave straps on people and we can have them watch how those signals are either out of sync with each other or in sync with each other. And when we modulate them, what we're actually trying to, trying to do with these subjects is helping them to be able to shift better out of fight or flight response into rest and digest response, right? A lot of times the problems that come for people who are prone to panic attacks and racing mind and racing heart and, and just feeling stressed all the time because we're on 24 seven is because we get stuck in sympathetic drive. The sympathetic nervous system is activated and activated and activated and activated and we're, we're unable or inefficient at least in sh downshifting and shifting over into parasympathetic drive where our bodies can recover and we can rejuvenate and we can recuperate and that's where you know, that's where burnout happens people spend too much time into in sympathetic drive and they just sort of burn themselves out and so if we can more efficiently help people shift from being on when you need to be on but then being off when you need to be off and recover and you know get good night's sleep and things like that so that's what this does if we can improve the efficiency of how the heart and brain talk to each other, we can improve this shifting. And here's how we go about measuring that and modulating that. This is a study that we did uh, and, and, and uh, presented at the American College of Sports Medicine's annual scientific conference. Um, here's the title of the study. Optimization of heart-brain axis signaling improves mental and physical performance. And this study was actually the basis of the patent that we got. So we did the study, we filed the patents, um, and then we launched the product um, after, after we knew the product did, it did exactly what we thought that it did. And here's the results. I won't go through all the, all the sort of preamble. I'll get, I'll get right, to the, right to the moral of the story. So after 30 days of supplementation with Meant to Heart, we showed that, that um, heart rate variability was improved. I'll talk more about that on the next slide. But people felt better. So, you know, profile of mood states again, right? This is the gold standard way of measuring how, pe how non-diagnosed people are feeling and so negative mood states are going down, tension, depression, anger, fatigue, confusion. But I want to point out something here. Look at the dramatic numbers that we're seeing here. The depression indexes are going down 76%, meaning their mood index, their, their mood parameters are increasing 76%. Confusion, which is sort of like brain fog, going down 62%, meaning their focus was improving 62%. 
really nice number, more than you know, more than a fifty percent improvement in in energy levels because fatigue indexes were going down. So people were clearly feeling better as a result of the Mental Heart or what became Mental Heart um, supplementation. Um, here are two ways of 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 measure or, um, calculating heart rate variability. So a higher heart rate variability is better. Uh, it's better for your, your heart function. Higher heart rate variability is associated with a lower risk for, for heart attacks. It's associated with, so with, with athletes, a higher heart rate variability is associated with a higher recovery index. So if your heart rate variability were low, we would say to that athlete, you're not fully recovered yet. We want you to do a light workout today, or we want you to get some more sleep, or we want you to, you know, not work out at all, or you know, more recovery, that kind of stuff. We can we can use it for the same thing of judging stress load, drug, judging uh, parasympathetic tone, and so there's a couple different ways you can you can calculate it. No matter how we calculate it, it's better after Mental Heart, after supplementing with Mental Heart for 30 days, 11 percent in this parameter. 19% in this parameter. And this is also a way of looking at parasympathetic nervous system tone. This is your ability to shift away from sympathetic into parasympathetic. This is your ability to downshift out of drive into recover, out of, out of go into slow. Okay, so that is a really, really good thing to, for, for people to have. And this is the first time it had ever been shown for, for a nutritional to do it. We know we can do it with breath work. We know we can do it with sleep. We know we can do it with different recovery modalities. Um, and so here now we also have a way we can do it from a, from a nutraceutical perspective. Um, here's, all the, here's all the profile of mood state subscales. I've already gone through those. Overall well-being was improved 23%. Uh, with this with this particular supplement and 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 the cool thing about this is that we were able to show that these improvements in heart rate variability gives you a physical heart benefit which leads to a psychological mental benefit the psycho you know the psychology parameters but what people also had was they had a cognitive benefit i don't have those slides here um I don't think I have them in this whole deck, but we have some other studies that we've done where we've shown there's a physical performance benefit, there's an emotional performance benefit, mood, and there's a cognitive performance benefit, things like focus and memory and executive function and problem solving and those sorts of things. I think I do, I think I do talk about that in, in, in one particular way with a, with a different product, but... So you can see this has opened up a whole new field of heart-brain axis, and we've, publi we've published a bunch of papers in there. So we have the gut-brain axis that we can modulate to help people feel better. We have the heart-brain axis that we can modulate to help people feel better. And then we can – and let, let's, let's not forget about the brain. Let's not forget about the brain and the head. There's all kinds of things that we can do for the brain and the head, and this is one of the products that we use to bring to bear on that problem. And so this product is just called Mood Plus. So Mood Plus, when we launched this in 2018, this was a finalist for Botanical of the Year because it, it has 10 botanicals in this formula that have been used for centuries, right, from all the traditional medicine system traditions. Um, traditional Chinese medicine, over 3,000 years. Traditional Indian medicine, Ayurveda, over 5,000 years. These are, these are where we get the ideas for these. And then we extract them in a particular way so we can standardize them. So every single bottle, every single capsule has the same level of efficacy. We can use the exact ingredients that were used in the clinical trials, which I'm going to share with you, uh, so that we know that we get efficacy, so that we know that people are going to feel better. Um, and, and, we can, and we can source them from, from good, trusted sources so we know we get good efficacy, good purity, good potency, all that kind of stuff. So what we have in here are, uh, like, among those 10, you can see the whole, the whole supplement facts panel here. Of those 10, four of them really, really stand out for their, for their, overall, for their overall clinical efficacy. This is Refuma, this little purple flower up here. This Refuma is here. We use a brand called Venetron. This helps support mood. This is Kana. We use a brand called Zembrin. This helps us support resilience. This is um, Ashwagandha. We use a brand called Sensorol that helps support stress or lower stress uh, and stress hormones. And this is, uh, this is Magnolia Bark. We use a brand called Relora that helps lower tension. 
and also helps with stress eating. So let's go through each one of those in turn. So this is this is Rafuma, the Venetron brand has been shown using this score. So I use in a lot of the trials that we use when we're studying non-depressed, non-anxious, non-diagnosed, normal subjects, people who are moderately stressed or sleep deprived or something like that. We use profile of mood states. Um, when you're studying someone who is depressed, you will very often use this scale called the Hamilton Depression Index. And so on this scale, Rafuma, um, after four weeks, reduces that depression index by about 30%. After eight weeks, by it reduces that index by about 50%. So that's a massive, massive magnitude of effect over a pretty short amount of time with an herb because this is something from traditional Chinese medicine that's been used for millennia to treat melancholy, right? If you're feeling kind of the blues and you're not quite happy about anything and you know that's sort of depression-like. And so th this has been studied using the Hamilton Depression Score um, to show that 30% reduction, 50% reduction over time. It also helps with insomnia. And this is really important because very often people who are depressed will have trouble sleeping and that trouble sleeping will lead to more depression. We see it all the time. This is a vicious, vicious cycle to get out of. And so a lot of times these people will get an antidepression uh, drug, an antidepressant, you know, a, Pro a Prozac or a Zoloft, so that they're not feeling as depressed, but that can interfere with their sleep even more. Sometimes they'll also get a sleep drug to try to squash both of these, and it doesn't, it doesn't work very well because they just don't feel much of anything anytime, and that isn't how they want to feel. They want to feel better. They don't want to just feel less worse. And so this is a way that you can solve both problems from a natural perspective with, with Rafuma. Okay, so there's that. Here's Kana. So Kana is a you can see the you can see the Latin name Scalidium tortuosum. Um, we cultivate so it can be wild crafted in South Africa, and you can see a gentleman from the Sand Tribe doing exactly that. Um, but we cultivate it with a with a cultivation partner over there. We grow it under very controlled conditions in greenhouses so we can maintain the bioactives at just the level that we want. Because if we if we're able to do that, we can get this with one dose of Zembrin. On a single usage, you can see this. You can see that using using functional magnetic resonance imaging, FM, fMRI, you can see that a single dose will, and I'm just going to read this, attenuate the reactivity within the amygdala that responds to threat and stress. So when you're in fight or flight reaction, when you're having a stress response right now in this moment and your amygdala is firing, you can have somebody supplement with Mood Plus and this dose of Zembrin and it'll take their stress response from a from a 10 let's say down to a 9 8 7 6 it's not going to shut it off it just attenuates it enough so that that person can function and so people generally like that effect right they like hey i was stressed out and now i'm able to get my get my work done um, you know, you still have the stress response, so you still have the motivation, you still have the fire lit under your butt so that you get the job done, but it's in a way that you're able to, 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 to function instead of freeze, right? Um, if you have them now supplement for three weeks, now you start to see this, where the Zembrin groups has this very significant improvement in something called cognitive flexibility. That is akin to being more resilient in the face of a stressful event. So you can help them with the stressful event right now, and then you can help them deal with the stressful event that's coming later. So the way I describe this to people is that pre-supplementation, you might have a stressful event where you just go, this is terrible, I can't deal, I'm out. And you will literally, like you will actually back away from it. But if your resilience is higher, if your cognitive flexibility is higher, that same exact scenario would still be stressful, but now your resilience is high enough where you can look at that same thing and say, wow, this is not a good event, but we're gonna, we're gonna figure it out. And you'll step into it and say, how are, we gonna, how are we gonna solve the problem? How are we gonna navigate this? What decisions need to be made? That's what cognitive flexibility is. It's decision-making, it's impulse control, it's strategy formation. And so your cognitive flexibility or your resilience is higher after using Zembrin three weeks after than it is before. So that's a really nice effect. And that, so mood, what Rafuma works on, is one way of feeling better. 
resilience, what Zimmern works on, is another way of feeling better. You can see how what we're, what we're doing here is trying to get people to feel more comprehensively, holistically better, and those are two ways of doing it. A third way of doing it is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is really, really hot right now. But uh, uh, similar to what I was talking about before when I was talking about probiotic strain specificity, you have to have the same skeptical hat on when you start talking about herbals. Because with ashwagandha, there's a lot of non-standardized ashwagandha powders out there that don't have any level of potency. You have some, you know, so you have some extracts out there that are roots, which if you have a good, ex uh, if you have a good ashwagandha root, it might relax you. If you have a good, um, so that's a root extract. If you have a leaf extract or a stem extract, that's going to be better, not for relaxation, it's going to be better for cognitive enhancement or maybe even for energy, right? Completely different effects just because they're coming from different parts of the plant. What we use, this sensoril, is a whole plant extract. So we're getting root extract, stem extract, leaf extract, because what we're trying to go for here is sort of a 50-50 proposition of energy and relaxation, what we would call, what we refer to as being in the zone. And so that's what we, that's what we want in this particular product. If we wanted just a relaxation product, we would get, we would get a really good ashwagandha root extract that's standardized to the, to the bioactives that we're looking for. Or if we wanted a focus uh, kind of a, a one, we could get a different extract that's standardized for those. We want an overall balancing effect and that's exactly what we get. So you can even see this over the course of a month of supplementation, you can see that, that cortisol levels, primary stress hormone, come down about 20, 25% with sensoril. And the counter-regulatory hormone to, to, to cortisol, DHEA, uh, which is the which is the precursor for testosterone in both men and women, that goes up about 30%. So when we're stressed out, cortisol levels will go up. That's generally bad. Um, and DHEA levels will also go down. That's also bad. It's really bad when you have both of those at the same time because, you know, then you're going to be not just not just stressed and irritated, but now you're going to be moody. Now you're going to be tired. Now you're going to be gaining weight around the midsection. And so if you can normalize both of those hormones, get them both into balance, you know, not just lower cortisol and not just raise DHEA, but get them back into balance with each other, that's what Sensoril does. And that's why we choose this one because it has that true balancing effect, right? That sort of, you know, and you, and you, you know, you see it biochemically here, but you also see it psychologically where people feel, they feel sort of just like dialed right into that zone where they feel like they can get things done. And then the last of the, of, of, of the sort of main four that are in there is Relora. And I said it was magnolia bark, but Relora is really a magnolia bark, philodendron bark combination that has been shown to help reduce tension. Um, and so here's here's profile of mood states again, right? From a completely different trial where all the negative mood states are going down and then a positive mood state like vigor is going up. And this is, was also a four-week trial. So, you know, again and again and again, as the mental wellness company, we can say, well, we can help you feel better in these ways with this intervention. We can help you feel better in these other ways with this, this intervention, these other ways with this other intervention. So what we're trying to do is really surround health professionals, surround customers, surround clients and patients. Whoever wants to feel better, we want to surround you with different choices that you can make to say, I want to feel better in that way and that way and that way. And I'm okay in that way. And somebody else might say, I want to feel better in that way and that way and that way, but not that way, right? So we let people customize whatever they, whatever they need. So this product, this, this, this Mood Plus, it works on all those four main parameters, right? It's helping with your mood. It's helping with your stress. It's helping with your resilience. It's helping with your tension. And this was probably the number one product that parents asked us for for their kids, right? Because – Stressed out teenagers, stressed out middle schoolers, you know, all the stuff that kids go through, right? Kids are, kids are more stressed now than they were when we were all kids. You know, social media and 24-7, you know, comparisons on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and all that kind of stuff. It's, 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 it's tough. And it was tough for my kids who are, who are adults now. Um, 
But so parents asked us for this, and the, 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 the downside of this formula is that none of those four ingredients that I just talked about had ever been studied in children before or teenagers before. And so we really needed to go back to the drawing board and say, what can we develop for kids and teens that is not this? Um, you know, lo lots, of, lots of parents do decide to, that this is the right thing for their kids, but that's a parent decision, not a, not a, not a corporate Amari decision. So we, re we formulated an entire product for kids, and it's just called Kids Mood Plus. And so this is a very, very different formula. It uses, um, it uses also you know, traditionally supported um, uh, herbs that help with mood and stress and resilience and you know, all those sorts of things. So things like, things like holy basil and rosemary and clove and oregano and those sorts of things. But we also have a very, very unique saffron extract. And again, I don't know if you can see this behind my little video here, but there's a beautiful picture of saffron right behind here. This particular saffron is a brand called Afron. Um, that has been used in some really important clinical trials that I'll show you on the on the next slide. But we put this together in a really fun way for kids and teens, so they're not swallowing more capsules. It's a it's a pixie stick, right? It's a little it's a little stick pack sachet where you rip it open and you dump the powder right into your mouth. You can dump it into water if you want to, but it's formulated to be what we call a direct to mouth powder. And kids just call it a pixie stick. You dump it in there. It tastes like sugar, but it's sugar-free. It has a base of prebiotic fiber. It's naturally sweetened. It's naturally flavored. It, it tastes delicious. Um, and it does all these wonderful things. It helps normalize serotonin and dopamine, balances stress hormones like cortisol, supports resilience, and improves all these different mood state parameters, right, in a, in a fun way. This is the other product that we just received a patent on, right? So we have a patent now on this blend to help with signaling across the gut-brain axis to help people feel better, to help them with, with all these different mood state parameters. So I actually use this product myself. I say right up here, it's not just for kids. Adults, a lot of adults use it, including me. Um, and it's not just for mood, because even though it's called Kids Mood Plus, most people, I think, use it for focus, um, largely because of this study. So this study... Um, uses the ex so all of these studies use the exact saffron extract that we use in this product, this Afron. Afron's been shown in this particular trial to be equivalent to a drug called methylphenidate. That's Ritalin. That's Ritalin and and and, and Adderall. Um, so the reason I make you aware of this is that I don't want you to say, oh, here's a here's a here's a replacement for Ritalin. Here's a replacement for Adderall. Um, as health professionals, we have a little more leeway to talk to our patients about what's available, what works, how we'd like to use it, what we'd like to use it instead of, all that kind of stuff. But uh, you can sure as heck, Amari isn't out there saying, here's an alternative to, 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 to Ritalin, e even though there's data out there that shows that, right? There's some, there's some legal ramifications for that. And I have another video that explains you know, how, to, how, how we talk about these sorts of things. This study looked at the same Afron extract in teenagers with depression, and it compared favorably to Prozac. This one looked at postmenopausal women and showed that Afron could improve their sleep quality. So we have something that helps with focus, something that helps with sleep quality. And, and so focus in children, sleep quality in postmenopausal women, and, uh, and mood in teenagers, right? So it's not just for mood. It's not just for focus. It's not just to help you relax. It really is that overall mood enhancement. And so when we put that all together, we had really good data on Afron. We had really good data on holy basil and rosemary and good traditional usage for things like clove and etc. But when we put it together in our little pixie stick formulation, we wanted to do a, you know, a little pilot study to see, see how it would perform. And so here's all the main ingredients that I just talked about. Here's the base that we put it in, a base of prebiotic fiber, natural sweeteners, natural flavors, um, you know, plant extracts to help it flow better. And we did a little trial in 10 families, and we saw 10 out of 10 of those families, their kids had improvements in focus, mood, and mental performance. And the way that we did this one, instead of using profile of mood states, which isn't really used in children, it's, it's really something that's reserved for adults. We use this other scale that was developed by the American Academy of Pediatrics, and it's very often used by clinicians to help parents judge, should, are these kids um, 
candidates for ADHD medications, right? So we use the same, you know, the same, the same tool. We had them supplement with um, with Kids Mood Plus Final Formulation, the one, the actual one that got patented for 30 days, and we did a we did a pre supplementation and a post supplementation value. And what you showed uh, w w with with this particular um, with this particular uh, um, tool that we that we used, you get two main outcomes. One is called an attribute, um, and one is called a performance metric. And so on this first one, it measures um, how are the kids doing on parameters like focus, attention, mood, listening, tension, irritation. Right? Are the kids listening? Are the kids, you know, doing their work? Are they, you know, are they not acting out? Are you know? Are they not, you know, irritated or anxious or you know that kind of stuff? And you can see very nice effect, twenty nine percent effect, um, twenty nine percent benefit. So here again, it a, 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 a kind of like global mood state. A lower number is a better number. On this parameter, this this performance metric, sometimes what you'll see is that kids do fine here when they're sort of like under controlled conditions. When they're when they're in their element, they're doing great. But then you put them in a stressful situation like schoolwork, math, reading, writing, social relationships, like being on a sports team, being in a, in a dance recital, being you know someplace where they're a little bit, it's a little bit chaotic. And what happens, the, the wheels come off, right? They have a blow up, they have a meltdown. But even here in those sorts of situations, the kids were still better. And that to me is the really, really important one. So, you know, two different ways of measuring this, but two different really, really nice benefits. Um, so that shows us that we can use a completely different formulation with different bioactives that work through different pathways to get you to the end goal, which is feeling better, performing better. And so they can be used, like I said, complimentary. I take Mood Plus every single morning to help with my resilience. I take Kids Mood Plus almost every afternoon, usually before doing a webinar like this or doing a Zoom call or something to make sure that I'm sort of on task and you know I've got a longer fuse you know, in case something's, something has a, a potential to irritate me. Um, so, so, so those are our Mood Plus products. Um, I want to say just a couple of words about this last product. Um, which is our Sleep Plus product. And, and I say it because sleep problems are, without overstatement, an epidemic. There are so many people that are so sleep deprived. And it's one of those things that gets pushed off by a lot of the people that we work with, right? They're, they're interested in hearing about nutrition. They're interested in hearing about stress management. They're interested in hearing about exercise or supplements. But sleep is that one thing where the, it, you know, it's, the, it's the end part of the day. It's the time I'm going to use. I'm going to carve out to catch up on things or I'm, I'm going to go to bed late. I'm going to get up early. It, it, people don't, I think, have an appreciation for how important it is for our mood, for our metabolism, for our ability to lose weight, for, for just absolutely everything, for our ability for our brain to clean itself, for our, the, the ability of our immune system to protect us. And so sleep is, sleep is really, really important. And we have a very unique sleep product that is non-melatonin. I am not at all a fan of melatonin. If you're supplementing with melatonin, you're not doing yourself any favors. Um, there's one place melatonin is okay, and that's if you're jet lagged. Use it for two or three days to help reset your circadian rhythm, fine, but then you have to get off of it because if you stay on it and you use it every night to help, you go, help yourself go to sleep, you're going to become dependent on it. You're going to have to take melatonin to sleep. So you're sort of locked in. It's not particularly effective. It will give you maybe seven minutes is what the studies suggest of a uh, longer sleep duration. Um, but it doesn't improve sleep quality. Um, it's definitely not something you should be using in children because it's a hormone. It can interact with or at least it has, it has impact on. Uh, reproductive hormones, so it absolutely shouldn't be used in children or in teenagers who are going through puberty. Um, so what's the alternative, right? Kids need to sleep. Adults need to sleep. Um, here, the, the, the alternative is to use a non-melatonin sleep enhancer, which is what Sleep Plus is. The main ingredient here is, uh, is, a, is a monocot grass called corn grass. Corn grass and wheat grass are in the same family called monocot grasses, and those grasses are high in something called 6-MBOA. Six, I'll show it to you on the next slide. 6-MBOA is a precursor that your body can use to make melatonin to help you with sleep quality or serotonin to help you with mood. 
So sleep plus, the, pl the sleep part is the sleep part. The plus part is the mood part. Part. If you supplement with this every night, you're going to be able to make more melatonin in the night if you're exposed to darkness, so you have better sleep quality. You're going to be able to make more serotonin in the day, so you're going to have better mood. And that serotonin in the day sets you up for a better night's sleep because now you have the building block to make more melatonin. And so the studies show you fall asleep faster, about 33%. You wake up fewer times per night, about 30%. Uh, fewer times, and you have a Im huge improvement in sleep efficiency and sleep quality. 50% improvement in sleep efficiency, 40% improvement in sleep quality. So sleep efficiency is a measurement of the amount of time that you're in bed, how much of that time are you actually asleep. That's sleep efficiency. Um, sleep quality is the measurement of how much time you're asleep are you spending in the high quality parts of sleep, REM, where your brain recovers and deep where your body recovers and recuperates. So if we can improve either of those, sleep efficiency or sleep quality, that means that even if you're only getting six hours a night, it's a higher quality six hours. Ideally, we want people to get eight hours every night and high quality, high efficiency. But you know, there's, there's, the, there's this thing called reality <laughs> where that's not gonna happen for a lot of people, right? So if you can get seven, and it's high quality, high efficiency, that's better. If you can get eight, that's even better. If you can, you guys get the idea. And this is a way that we can do it by not giving you melatonin and instead giving you a building block for melatonin so that your body can make the melatonin if you need it. And if you don't need it, it's not gonna make it. And that way, we avoid the melatonin hangover, we avoid the melatonin where, where you don't metabolize through all the melatonin, you wake up the next morning and you're still groggy. Um, we avoid the melatonin dependency, we avoid the melatonin um, impact on, on reproductive hormones, and so we get all the, all the benefits of melatonin, so to speak, without the downsides, and, and you know, we're able to sort of um, work with our body's circadian rhythms so that we start developing normal sleep cycles. So we fall asleep quicker, we stay asleep longer, we spend more time in REM, we spend more time in deep, and the result of all of that is that you do feel better. Um, th so there are lots of studies on this showing that showing that 6-MBOA um, does generate more melatonin, does generate more serotonin, does help with overall well-being, does help with, with mood state, does help with energy levels. And so you know that's another one that I think is really, really impactful for the people who come to see us because who comes to see a, a alternative-minded, holistic-minded, complementary medicine minded health practitioner there are people who have not gotten good results with the the with the standard offerings right maybe they've tried antidepressants maybe they've tried sleep drugs maybe they've tried adhd medications or maybe they haven't tried those things and they don't want to try those things because they know that all the all the problems associated with them so they come to us and they 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 want a, they want a better approach they want a holistic approach they want a natural approach they want to feel comprehensively better and a lot of times i should say this a lot of times by the time they get to us they are, they are the hard nut to crack, so to speak. They're the ones who have tried this and it didn't work and tried that and it didn't work and tried that and it didn't work. And so they come to us and it, we, we, we sometimes get the hard cases. And the hard cases are the ones that need to be solved through a systems approach. They need to have their whole gut-brain axis remodulated. They need to have their whole heart-brain axis made more efficient. They need to have all their neurotransmitters balanced instead of just their serotonin. They, you guys get the idea. So we have all the products that do that. We have Fundamentals and we have Happy Juice and we have Mood Plus and, and we have packs. This is one of the things that we really try to do here at Amari is help people make that choice. Like what is it for me that's gonna be the right set of solutions? How can I feel better right now, somewhat right now, and then get better and better and better and better. And that better and better and better and better is what I refer to as something called phased benefits. So in fundamentals pack, for example, there are ingredients and in fundamentals that you will feel within the hour that you take them and your tension will come down and your brain will wake up a little bit, right? And you'll feel better as a result of that but that didn't do anything to your microbiome. It didn't do anything to your short chain fatty acid production. It didn't do anything to your gut integrity. It didn't do anything to prime your immune system. But you did feel better, 
and you felt better because we were able to change your brainwave activations. We were able to move you out of beta waves into alpha waves, so out of irritability into relaxed alertness, right? So great, we can do that with certain nutrients, but we, th that nutrient doesn't work on some of those other things. So hopefully you felt good enough where you're going to take it the next day and the next day and the next day. And after a week or so, now you notice that your confusion is lifting, your brain fog is lifting, and you can focus better and remember better and create better and you're more engaged and that's a different way of feeling better than what you felt on day one you can't get that on you can't get you can't get the the alleviation of brain fog on day one but you can get it on week one and then you like how you feel so you keep taking it and then after about two weeks you start to see that resilience come in where you can you can handle more stress and then after about four weeks, you start to see changes in those mood indexes and those, and those tension indexes and those resilience indexes. So you feel better, and then you feel more better and more better and more better. And that's just – it's, it's partly related to how your biochemistry works. It's partly related to how your mood state parameters just manifest themselves. And so that's why we put together these packs. So fundamentals pack, happy juice pack – and happy hormones pack. And the way I like to differentiate these is that if you have somebody that really needs to support something, they have something going on. They've got maybe some gut issues going on, maybe some, you know, inflammatory balance issues going on. They've got some some memory issues going on. Like they have something that needs to be like like there's something that needs to be rebalanced. Fundamentals is probably the place to go because it really does adjust across that entire gut brain axis at the level of the microbiome, at the level of the gut integrity, at the level of the, you know, the immune system portion of your of your axis, at the level of brain activation. So that's a place to go if you really need to support something. If you've got that person that's sort of the middle of the mental wellness continuum and they're just that person that doesn't have any problems, right? They don't have any issues. They're just they're fine, right? They're 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 okay. Um, but they're also the person that could probably benefit from a little more resilience, could probably benefit from a little more sharpness in their brain, could benefit from being a little happier and a little stressed out and a little more energetic. That's the person that we want to bring from languishing up to flourishing, from burnout up to vigor. That's the sweet spot of the mental wellness continuum because it's the person that looks around and goes, well, wait a minute. I don't have any problems, and you know I am kind of fatigued in the day, and I am kind of tense at night, and I and I do have trouble relaxing, and I do have trouble turning it off. But so does everybody else around me. I think I'm just getting older, and I think I just have a stressful job, and I think I just have a busy family. Well, well, so does everybody. But everybody can benefit from from moving up one on that mental wellness continuum. So their energy is better, and their resilience is better, and their mood is better. That's a happy juice candidate. And these are three powders that you could just mix up in one water bottle or one glass, and you, and you drink it down, and you get the benefits. Easy peasy. If you have somebody, though, who is pretty good, they're maybe higher on that mental wellness continuum. They maybe have things pretty dialed in, but they want to dial in a little bit more. Maybe they're a seven or an eight, and they want to be a nine. Or they're an eight or a nine, and they want to be a 9.2. Right? That's the person where you can say, let's dial in your performance by dial in, dialing in your sex hormones, your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, dialing, dialing in your stress hormones and your mood hormones and your neurotransmitters, something like Mood Plus, cortisol, serotonin, dopamine, dialing in your metabolic hormones so you can get down to that fighting weight, insulin and glucose and thyroid, and the, probably the hottest one on the market right now, GLP-1, you know, GLP-1 GLP agonist like – Ozempic and Wigovi and the new one that's going to hit the market in a, in a couple of months, uh, uh, Mujaro, um, and, and increasing your short-chain fatty acids. If you can get all of these, appetite is better and blood sugar is better and, and cravings are lower and fat burning is better and metabolism is enhanced. So you do all of these and people are really firing on all cylinders. You know, So the hard part of this, and I, and I get this, is that somebody says – well, what if I want to support something and I want to feel better and I want to dial in my performance, right? Can I have all of that? Well, sure, you certainly can do that, but I don't recommend it because you know people will hear a presentation like this and they're like, yeah, I want all of that. Please sign me up for everything. And that's not what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do here is get somebody to figure out where their biggest pain points are right now because it might be that somebody starts with a fundamentals pack 
and they and they get all the support and everything gets balanced and their gut brain axis is in better shape and then they go huh all right i'm a lot better now than i was back there two or three or four months ago and now i want to switch over to the happy juice and now on the happy juice i'm just doing this and i'm and i'm getting better and i'm getting better and i'm feeling good and they might move up and 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 get to, to a point where they want to dial things in and they want to start training for a marathon or they want to whatever their goals are right so you can see where as you get better you might change up the packs you might change up you know you well you don't see sleep plus on here you don't see kids mood plus on here we have a whole kids pack right so for kids there's a whole kids pack that does it um you don't see any of our other 30 or so other products right because i really wanted to focus you guys on these as health professionals i think these are the ones that make the biggest impact on the people that we work with it's the easiest doorway in to get a lot of the main benefits sort of checked off for those patients so that they can feel better now and then feel more better and more better and more better with those phase benefits so i really appreciate you guys um taking a look at this um if you have any questions Hit me up on my blog. Hit me up on any questions. Go to any of the other places, amari.com, uh, Amari's Facebook pages. We really, really try to make this information as available and as consumable uh, as possible. So really appreciate you guys sticking in there, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.